Hi and welcome back to another video from Effective Dashboards. In this video I'm going to introduce a visual that is very useful for root cause failure analysis and that visual is called the decomposition tree. Okay so let's just get started. So across here we've got some, um, some of these visuals here and we've got this one here which is called a decomposition tree. So if you click on the decomposition tree and we'll add it in and I'm going to cover my top five tips for how to use this decomposition tree for root cause failure analysis. So root cause failure analysis, I'm just going to quickly show you the data set that I've got. So we've got a list of work orders. This is a completely fabricated data set. The codes are, are, are codes that you would expect to see, but the actual data is just made up. So that's why the descriptions are just generic. So we've got a thousand work orders here and we want to analyze to see if there's any trends or anything that we can pick out the data that's going to allow us to put together some sort of action plan to help us reduce the number of failures that we're going to have in the future. So the data has been coded with the physical cause and the physical cause category and subcategory, the human cause, so how we behaved or uh, an aspect of us as humans and how that impacted the failure or caused the failure was a cause of the failure. And finally, the systemic cause. So this is the management system that was in place that was deemed to have caused or been at the root cause of the failure. Okay, so we've got, was it communication? Was it maintenance processes? Was it something to do with risk management? Was it engineering design? So you get the kind of idea here, and we'll see some of these as we go through. So we've got data here, complete with nulls and stuff. So this is a typical data set that we're going to use to analyze the data. Okay, so we're back over in Power BI and we've got the decomposition tree in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about these here. So there's three different field wells here. We're not going to talk about tooltips at the moment. In this video, we're going to talk about analyze and explain by. So fairly straightforward in terms of the number of fields. Analyze is simply the, the, the numeric figure that you're going to actually use to analyze and decompose and break down using this decomposition tree. And explain by are the categories that are going to be used to explain that figure. So the first tip I've got here is kind of two tips in one, and it's how to make sure that you set these up correctly. So the first thing is this value here has to be something that can be aggregated. So an example is a, a number of work orders, or perhaps I can use downtime. Now you can only use one of these. If I try to pull that across, it's going to overwrite that. So there can only be one figure there, but that's fine. That makes kind of sense. We just focus on one, one value at a time. And the second one is this explain by. So the order that you add the categories in here kind of does and doesn't matter. And you'll see why in a second. So we're going to add it in, in a, ma it kind of makes sense to add it in an order that makes sense to decompose or start to drill in, drill through the information. And the reason for that, you will become clear. So this is my first tip. Make sure that this is in an order that you would want to lead yourself or anybody using the dashboard through. So we're going to use physical cause, physical cause subcategory, and then we're going to use human cause category and human cause subcategory. And then we're going to use systemic cause and systemic cause category. Okay, so now we can see that our decomposition tree has got the total number of work orders, which is a thousand, and this plus has appeared here. Now, when I click on this plus, and this is a first tip here, make the order that these are displayed in, you can select any order you want, but the order they're displayed in is the same as the order that you enter them into the field wheel. Okay, so our minds work in a way that subconsciously we will give a higher importance to things at the top of a list than at the bottom of a list. So that's tip number one. Make sure that the most important fields are at the top if you have one and that the least important ones are towards the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to start clicking on one of these and I'm going to click on the first one here, which is the physical cause category. And we can see it's broken these thousand work orders into the different categories. So we've got instruments, we've got integrity, we've got electrical, we've got external influences, we've got mechanical, etc. And there's a little button at the bottom here 
let you scroll down even further. So I'm just going to scroll up here. Now, what you can see is that this bar here, and this is my second tip, is to understand and use sensible bar ratios. Okay, and I'll explain that just now. So this bar here has been uh, is 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 a full width of the actual category pane. Okay, so it's a full width of this category here, and that represents a hundred percent. And that 100% is not this value here. It's 100% of the largest category or the largest value in this category, or this explain by category that we've chosen. Chosen. So each one of these bars now represents a ratio of this top bar. This top bar being 100%. So you can see this one's around 60%, 66%. This one's maybe 60%. This one's maybe now about 15% of this value here. Okay, now if we open it back up again and look at instruments and say, okay, let's examine that heart, instruments and let's look at the physical subcategory, we can see the same things happen again. That 63 is the highest and it's taken as 100% of the actual category there, physical subcategory, and each one of these is now a ratio of this or that, is, is now, the bar is relative to this, is the word I'm looking for. Okay, and we can see as it goes down these. Um, so it, it kind of, as long as you know that that's the case, then that's fine. But it can be a little bit confusing because you're sitting thinking, surely each one of these bars represents a portion of the total, or is it the what? What is it, is it related to that, or what is it related to? So you can actually select a different interaction mode here, a different mode. For each one of these bars and de determine what this um, what this top bar shows. So if I go into the format options and I am going to go to data bars and you can choose the color etc. That's fine. But down here, this this option here is the option we're looking for. So at the moment, it's scaled to is to the level maximum. Okay, so each one of these levels, it's scaled each of the other values within that level to the maximum for that level. Now, if you then go and open this up, there's a couple of other options. So the first option here is top mode node. So what that's going to do is it's going to scale everything here to a percentage of this top node here. Now, I think that is probably a little bit more sensible for our needs here because we can kind of see we're interested in reducing this number here. And we can start to see, okay, well, instrumentation is a big chunk of that. And within instrumentation, we are really looking at no clear leader to go and actually start um, to start looking at. Noise is the same as out of adjustment, and it's the same of these, this one here, common causes and control fares are not far behind. So there's no real clear kind of winner here that we'd want to go and look at. But we can see each one of these has got an, an almost equal impact on the, the, the thousand work orders. Now, the other option we've got is to look at parent node. Now, this for me is probably what I would use for root cause analysis. Now, with root cause analysis, what we're doing is we're looking at, we typically use the 80-20 or the Pareto principle. And we're looking at what is the 80% of the if this is 100%, what are the 80%, it doesn't need to be 80%, but what is 80% of the, what causes 80% of these issues? And normally you'll find that 20% of the cut, the values contribute to 80% of the issues. So that's what we're kind of looking for here. So if we look at this one here, we can see that instrumentation is certainly contributing. It's not 80%, but it's a big, a, a larger percentage there. So the next thing we'd want to do is try and find some, inf find out what is causing the instrumentation um, issues. Now, because we've chosen that parent node, each one of these now will add up. These, if you added these segments together, each of these segments would provide a full bar. Would result in a full bar or that value there. And then if we went to this segments here, each one of these would add up to a, a full bar, so like 100%, which would be this value here. So it's slightly easier to kind of get 
your head around the fact that all of these here, rather being in relation to this top bar here, are in relation to this value here. Now, that value becomes the 100% value here, but you can kind of see that that is now expanded and let's choose integrity. So this will just happen automatically if I just choose this integrity. There we go. Uh, and we can see again, no real kind of pattern here. Let's look at electrical. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's made up data, so it's not going to help it help with that. But normally, you would find that with one or two of these would be a clear cut. Would one of these one of these would make up? So a few of these would make up quite a lot of the actual uh, work orders. That's the eighty twenty principle there. So that's the second thing: is understand which one of these nodes that you are using and which one is most appropriate for your data. And, and as I said, I would suggest you use this parent node and um, that seems to be the one that works best. It seems to be a bit more logical to say, okay, each one of these adds up to 100% rather than if you go over this um, level here, it's kind of these bars, it's, it's, a bit more it's a bit more confusing about what they actually relate to. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's tip number two understand how to sc how the, the scale to level that you're going to use for your decomposition tree. Okay, so I'm just going to change this back again to parent node. Right, so the next tip I've got is tip number three, and that is to understand how to use this high and low values. So if I go right back to the start here, you can if I click on here, rather than go and actually select a, a, a category to go and actually start exploding by, this value here, selecting this value here, will find the category, let me just run this, with the highest value in terms of contribution towards this number here. So what we've done now is, rather than go and search through our physical, then our human, then our systemic causes, it's just gone straight to this human cause category and mental, the mental cause category has 448 work orders and that is the largest contributor to this, this um, these number of work orders. And then if we open this up again, find the highest value here. Now, it might not always make sense, so and you do need to add a little bit of human kind of judgment to this. But then it's saying, okay, mental and then we've broken it into instruments. So instrument failures with a cause that was related to a human cause that was related to our mentality and a mental aspect of our um, our behavior are one of the biggest causes. Does that really make sense? Mm, I'm not sure. It's kind of the, the horse before the cart. So actually, if we just go in here now and say, okay, well, we've got the highest value. Thanks for showing me that. Let's go and look at underneath mental, what are the subcategories? Because maybe that's something else I could action. And here we can see, okay, well, fatigue, stress, and poor judgment are all things that have contributed towards work order or equipment failures. So now we're actually getting towards a point where we've got some real actionable causes that we could go and address. Fatigue management, we could put something in place to manage, manage fatigue. And make sure that we're not make sure we're not mentally or physically fatiguing people too much. Now this is mental fatigue management, so it's all about how much you how how much you can think about this at one time. Our stress levels, so it's about managing stress and poor judgment. So it could be um, some training on making good judgments and decision making. So now we've got to the point that we are able to start making some some plans. So that's where it comes into its own, really, this this option here. Now, that's the absolute value. Now, the other option we've got is if we go back into our options here and go to analysis, there's this value here, analysis type. Now, it's currently it's an absolute. Now, if you change it to relative, and we do the same thing here, and choose the highest value. 
Now, what has happened here is that it selected the value with the highest relative difference between the, 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 the highest category in that group and the second highest category in that group. Okay, so to help with that, I'm actually going to go back and this is where this um, data bar, when it's got this level maximum. So this is chosen automatically by looking through each of the different categories. That general, and that isn't particularly helpful, but general is the category or the value which has got the highest relevant contribution in terms of its difference between the first and second values here. Okay, you can see there's a big difference between 125 and 160. It's almost double. Or, yeah, it's almost double. So that is what has happened here. Now, I'm, I'm not 100% sure how I would use this. Um, that's what it does. That's a functionality. I need to kind of ponder how I would actually use it in a real life situation. Um, yeah, I guess it's going to give you the. I don't know. I don't know. I need to think about it. If anybody's got any suggestions, then certainly leave a comment below. But that's what it does. It chooses the value with the highest relative um, contribution based on that particular. Um, what's it called again? Level and the values within the level. Now let's do it again and choose a highest value here. And we can see the second one here. So this one is not quite as high, otherwise it would have been first, but then that would be general and then mental would be the second one. So I don't know, it's quite difficult to explain it, quite difficult to understand what's going on there. There may be it may be use, more useful for certain other data types. I mean this is root cause analysis, it might be useful for other data types. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure, but that's what it does. So my second tip would be to understand the analysis type that you're using and understand what change in this value does. Now what you will notice is if you just select a value from here, this analysis type does nothing. Doesn't doesn't have any any um any contribution. It's only when you use these values at the top here um and you want it to choose either the absolute highest value or the relative highest contributing value for a particular level or particular category. Okay so Hopefully that kind of makes a little bit of sense um, for my tip there. And that is the third tip to understand how this analysis type works. Okay, so my fourth tip is going to be using conditional formatting. Now, conditional formatting, I'm a, I'm a big fan of conditional formatting. I'll leave some links to some of the videos underneath and um, there'll be a pop up at the top right hand corner. I really think it's useful and I think every report should have some form of conditional format just to help ease the person who's looking at it along to making a decision and make it easy for them. So if what I've done here is I've changed this back to the um, the parent node. So each one of these is now looking at the parent node has been 100% and then that's a, a breakdown of that. And we can see here that everything is the same colour. Okay, so when we're looking at root cause analysis, we really want to hone in on the the, the high value or the, the the codes that are contributing the most to the actual number of failures. Okay, so to help with that, we can use conditional formatting. So we open it up and we're going to choose, there's only one, there's a um, record account and we're going to enable just, just the one here is the data bar color and we're going to put that on. Now we're going to go in here and as soon as you open this up, you've got the color scale, you've got the values and totals. We don't really need that. We could just choose the values. Um, we'll leave it as it is for just now. Based on field, work order, count. And once you open it up and if you want to change some of these values here, you do need to put a minimum and maximum value in. So you do need to know this value here. So we're going to choose that and we're going to choose that. Okay, and what that does is you can see now if you take a, a little bit of a step back, you can clearly see just by looking at it where the the color is, and that is where you're going to focus your efforts. Okay, these colors here. Now I might even go as far as to change this ever so slightly and pull in a, a middle color and maybe make make it a bit more vibrant. Or in fact, choose a, a top color 
which is going to be here. Choose a middle color that is closer to that, yeah. Um, and we'll call that one 500. And it just doesn't change it too much because of the, the way it's been actually distributed. But here we can see that these are the values here that we we need to focus on. And I'm just going to check to see, did I change that data bar back? Yeah, parent node. Yeah. So it just, these values here, they're, they're, they're really low. We're not really, we're not really too interested in these. Um, however, we are interested in these values here. So as well as being at the top, which is great, it just adds an extra dimension with the, the color on top of that as well. I'm just going to go back and change that color because I think we can do better than this. If you go into conditional formatting and let's make that one a bit lower down. Let's make it uh, 300. Okay, so uh, you can make it a bit lower, so it's, it's, a, it's these are a little bit brighter, just so they do draw your attention a little bit more. But anyway, this is tip number four. Use conditional format and just to add that extra element of guidance and to draw the eyes to the to the areas that really need to, we really need to focus on. Okay, and finally, tip number five, and that is to use the interaction of the decomposition tree. So there's two ways you can interact with the decomposition tree. The first one is you can create a drill through. So I've actually got uh, another page set up here with a list of work orders in it. I've added the, each of the categories as the drill through. And if we're in here and I want to see the list of, for example, what are those 32 work orders that have been I have a, had a physical cause of noise or um, an indication, an alarm, no signal or an indication or an alarm either. I can simply right click on here, drill through, and there we have our list here. Okay, that work orders and we can now start to do something and there's not a lot of information here just now, but this is a list of work orders that we can start to look at. We can look at um, understanding what pieces of equipment they're against. Um, all of these are against the same piece of equipment as, as it stands just now, but we can start to l just look at the, the any other information in here that might be relevant. And if we need to go back and actually address these work orders, we can. Of course, you can use this back button here. And the other form of interaction is you can add in additional charts in here. So let's add a table in here if you want to have it in the same place. And let's just quickly add in the work order description. We'll add in the work order number as well. Uh, I'll add in some other information. It would be other information like categories of work. Is it, is it, was it a breakdown? Was it a corrective activity, et cetera, et cetera. But you can see here, this is the information that you could show. And as soon as you click on one of these, uh, we can see that we've got the list of work orders there. Let's click on this one here, and here we can see, yeah, here's those work orders, instrumentation failures. We'll bring this physical cause subcategory in, just to be clear that this is going to show this um, correct one. Let's look at this other one we looked at before, and we can see that it's got that list of work orders there. Okay, so that is the fifth and final tip, is to make sure that you in use it for interacting with the particularly detailed lists because ultimately you want to get to some of the detail and, um, and, and start making some decisions about this, um, what actions you're going to put in place. Okay, so hopefully it's been useful and hopefully you can start to use this for your root cause failure analysis. Thanks for listening. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos from Effective Dashboards, I tend to release one about every, every week, then hit the subscribe button and that would be really helpful and I'd appreciate that.